my name is uh, Jens. We're from the University of Applied Sciences, uh, Western Switzerland. Uh, and we have done this project together also with the University of uh, Zurich. Um, so during the presentation, we, we will uh, switch. I will start and then uh, I hand over to, to Nicola. Um, so this morning and uh, right before we, we saw some, some, some things that we can do with uh, 2D georeferenced uh, pictures, satellite imagery, for instance. But there is also a, a huge potential in 3D georeferenced pictures uh, because 3D georeferenced pictures, especially photos, they go back in time much further than uh, satellite imagery. So we can uh, we can also take this as a, as a data source to do uh, lots of things. So for instance, to to analyze uh, the retreat of of glaciers, or we can also uh, see the the effects of uh, urbanization. Like for instance, on the left, you, we see a. a a historical pictures, a uh, picture from the 1950s, and on the right we see a more recent one, or uh, also natural hazards. That's an, another uh, thing that we can, where we can use 3D uh, georeferenced imagery to to do some analysis. However, 3D georeferenced historical pictures um, they are often distributed in many archives around the world. One problem is that uh, these pictures are generally not digitized. So in order to use them with the computer, you need to put them on the scanner. Then of course, pictures are not georeferenced. In order to use them uh, with different algorithms and, and so on, it's, uh, it's good to have a uh, georeference. And often pictures are not properly tagged. So uh, there are pictures, but nobody knows exactly where they have been taken, when they have been taken, and what is visible on these pictures. So some years ago, we have created a platform called uh, Smapshot. Um, and on this platform, we use crowdsourcing for the 3D georeferencing of, uh, of images. So uh, you can see, if you want to check yourself, uh, here's the URL of, uh, of the system. And uh, there's a screenshot of, of the system where you can see um, a 3D georeferenced picture, a historical picture superimposed on, on a virtual globe. So at the moment we have uh, around yeah, more than 700 volunteers and we have more than 200,000 uh, georeferenced images uh, coming from collections from all over Switzerland, part of uh, Austria and also Brazil. I will now, now hand over the presentation to Nicola who will uh, explain to you how um, Smapshot works and also uh, what is the goal of the open API that we have developed. Thank you, Jens. So when we are speaking about georeferencing images, actually you may not be familiar with that wording, but you, when you are taking a picture with your camera or your smartphone, it has an actual position on the earth. So the picture that has been taken by that camera could be virtually georeferenced by selecting points, which are called ground control points within the photogrammetry field, on the picture itself and on a 3D globe. We are based on a cesium 3D globe for the georeferencing process in Snapshot. And this allows you to compute the pose, well, not actually of the image itself, but of the camera that has taken that image. So it will give you the three uh, values for the position on the Earth and then the three angles around the same axis, the azimuth, the pitch and the world angle. And for those who are not familiar with projecting themselves into these 3D views, we can understand the same principle by these small 2D sketches. Like for example, on the first one, you see the two dots that were clicked on the image, which are, which are the ground control points. And the, the, on the terrain, actually on the, the trees and the house, and by rectifying the, the 3D rays that originate from the camera position to the clicked point on the 2D space of the image and on the ground, you can align the image correctly uh, in the 3D world. And based on that, we can further explore the data once the picture has been geolocalized. And for example, we are able to compute its footprint, so the, the ground border, the projection of the border of the, the image on the ground, which is then useful for computing other metadata and extracting, for example, place names, which you can then select as an index tool 
for searching, for example, people uh, images from certain mountains or certain river that you are interested in for such studies, for example. So on the really first raw metadata such as these, we have what we call a view cone, which is actually not really a cone there because it's projected on the map. And it's really the field of view of the picture from the position, and that's it. You may define the maximum range if you want, but it does not necessarily have to have one. And after that, we compute the footprint. Now it's directly done into cesium, so it's basically the projection of the border of the image on the ground. And after that, we are using a tool uh, called the Viewshed Analysis from a software called Saga GIS, which is open source as well, to compute the viewshed. So it's basically taking into account the relief in the image to show you where what are exactly the pixels that are visible on the ground. So if you have a valley and there are houses or river on the bottom of that valley, it will be hidden by the foreground mountain, so it won't show up. So with all these, we have done after a, a, a study with the Swiss Confederation uh, work to improve our first uh, API, which was a bit messy, to reorganize it and to provide it as a, actually, you can follow this URL. It will show you a Swagger, such, um, also known as the Open API version 3. So it, it's really well documented. You have many endpoints to, to select images based on certain attributes and so on. So this really opened doors to many use cases within universities or whatever organization which want to do some analysis of these images, of these historical images within Switzerland, a bit of Austria, as Jens said before, and Brazil uh, today. And it also gives uh, the users a standard access to the database because prior to that, we have uh, plenty of partners who asked us to feed them some data sets or extract of data sets. So we have to do ourselves some dump from the database, then they organize them into CSV file and things like that. But now it's all done through the API, actually, which is really cool. And we are exploring uh, now more way of exporting this data in standard way. For example, we have seen that within the exif data that you may have on your photos, the position is given, for example, if you have a GPS chip connected to your camera, but the angles are not supported, except for the, the azimuth using the compass, but it's not really precise. And we actually use GLTF for displaying onto the cesium globe uh, on the web platform, which is encoded into JSON or GLB for the binary format. And it can contain the pose of the image, but it's a bit messy to understand the, the projection system. Uh, well, not really the projection system, but the, the, the order of the orientation angles within the cesium uh, framework. And it's only supported in, in certain amount of tools, not necessarily all. Uh, we are also digging into the newly triple IF uh, server for serving uh, large images. For example, museums are using triple IF to serve uh, digital pieces of arts uh, images, for example, and things like that. And you can really zoom into the images. It is served as tiled images, so it's really optimized for the web. But it has not yet support for Geodata. They are actually working actively on trying to integrate and figure out how to get things geolocated within the IIIF, but it's not yet finalized. And we also are much in, uh, into the, the, the work of the OGC Geopole Standard Working Group to try to figure out how we can integrate that to serve, for example, a Geopose which is compliant with the OGC standard uh, within our API. And this will allow us normally to be interoperable with any other software that will implement the Geopose standard. So this is just a, on the right a small capture of the, the Swagger API that you may found on the URL I, sh I shared before. And underneath, there is a small subset of the camera position and its footprint where you can see, for example, in one of the routes, I don't remember exactly which one, but if you want, we can discuss after, the pose which is returned by a route of the API for a given photo. So we have the altitude in meters, uh, latitude, longitude as angles, and all the three angles, plus the focal in pixel of the camera. And the background implementation is using Postgres and PostGIS for storing the data in the database. We are using Python for background scripts. Of course, JavaScript for the web parts and the OpenAPI specification, I already did talk about it, the GLTF and IIIF, because we are now also able to integrate uh, images from people and institutions who has already in, uh, we are already serving images as IIIF uh, data. So we are able to connect to this server 
made the people draw a reference to the picture and then feed them back the data so that they can the, the owner of the collection can integrate the result of the geolocation by the volunteers. So I will give up the, the talk to Jens back for the last slides. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, so now that we have this, uh, uh, this API, we have some use cases where, where we are all, well, different people, different organizations are already using this API to do, to do, to do, to do different things. Uh, one use case is uh, a project uh, of the University of uh, Zurich. Uh, the project is called Bilder der Schweiz Online, so images of Switzerland online. They have paintings, both paintings and photos, and they use this new API for the extraction of data. And their goal is to build um, a knowledge graph uh, using linked data. This means that, for instance, if they have some famous painters who have painted some pictures of Switzerland, they know when it has been painted. But for instance, they know they don't know exactly from where the, the picture has been painted. So, uh, Snapshot is used to generate this metadata to compute the exact lo location and so they can retrace the way of the, of the painters in, um, uh, in their knowledge graph. And uh, something that we also implemented uh, in this, uh, in this uh, API is the pushing of new images to Snapshot through this API. So once they, they have a new collection or they have new, new pictures in a collection, they can simply push the, um, the IIIF links through the API to, uh, to Snapshot the pictures are geo-referenced by the volunteers and afterwards they can re-access uh, the new data that has been generated. Um, another use case is re-photography. So th this is the, the idea of retaking a picture, um, a, a historic picture, but uh, today. So uh, there were two students, two master students from the University of Lund who um, implemented a prototype, which you can see here on the left. It's a mobile uh, application uh, that shows you a historical picture that um, shows you how to get to the point from where the historical picture has been taken. Of course, these are only uh, terrestrial uh, photos that, that have been selected in order to be able to, to retake the, the photo. And uh, once you have retaken the photo, uh, they calculate some, some uh, uh, measures of accuracy uh, in order to uh, indicate to the user how accurate the uh, re-photograph uh, is. Uh, another use case uh, that has been recently implemented uh, is um, uh, the automatic positioning of a UAV, so a drone. So there were some, um, some scripts that have been implemented in order to uh, automatically position uh, a UAV, a, a drone, at a certain point and to retake the, uh, the historical pictures. So now um, these two use cases, uh, you can see that it's possible to, to retake ter both terrestrial photos and, um, and uh, also uh, aerial photos, oblique aerial photos. Um, Another use case that also came came up uh, in discussion uh, when, while we were discussing discussing with the University of uh, uh, of Zurich is, um, for instance, the, uh, the calculation of artistic uh, distortion. So, if you geo -re geo reference uh, a painting, of course, geometrically it's not exactly the same as a as a photo. And uh, yeah, in the 18th, 19th century, there were many painters who um, who thought that they could look um, could, could make the terrain look more dramatic, so they exaggerated the, the terrain, and this you can see in the, on, on the picture on, on, the, on the right. Another use case is also the training uh, of, um, of algorithms, so machine learning algorithms for the automated detection of lands landscape features. There were, there's also the, the EPFL who contacted us uh, who want to um, implement um, uh, a machine al learning algorithm that takes these pictures and is able to recognize uh, uh, different features in the, in the pictures. And since we have the geolocation, we can exactly um, have the geolocation of these different features. And the idea is then to, um, to position uh, a drone without a GPS, just by recognizing uh, the different features in, uh, in the pictures that comes from, uh, from the drone's camera. Um, and, uh, Third use case are also um, this is uh, also there are some some projects uh, all over the world 
uh, that are called photographic observat observatories. Here, the idea is to also to, to do re-photography uh, from specific points, several po at a certain frequency, for instance, every year or every second year, and then to uh, document and uh, analyze uh, land, uh, land landscape change. Um, and now, as, as a perspective, we, now that we have this uh, open API, which is connected to, to Snapshot, uh, we would like to go towards a decentralized infrastructure for 3D georeferenced imagery. So with Snapshot, it's possible to, uh, to uh, georeference a picture in 3D, but it's, of course, also possible to, to do georeferencing using automatic georeferencing. So this is uh, also something that Nicolas uh, has done some years ago, um, where we have one picture where we know exactly the geolocation, and we are able to detect in another picture that does not have a, a geolocation matching points. And since we have the geolocation of these matching points, we can automatically georeference a second image, and so on. If, you have, if we have several images that are more or less taken on the same place, we can use the existing georeference of uh, existing photos to georeference pictures, photos without uh, georeference. And, um, and of course, as Nicolas already said, we, we also want to uh, use GeoPose for, uh, for, future, for future implementations, for future versions of this uh, API. Uh, so this new uh, OGC standard and also OGC API features is also uh, something very interesting. And we aim at creating a consortium of state entities, archives, universities and associations to create this decentralized infrastructure and um, yeah, to focus on standardization, but also on uh, cloud-based cloud um, infrastructures. Okay, thank you very much for listening.